So and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Corsair Glaive RGB. It's been out about a week. As you know on Tech Tuesdays, take a look at gaming peripherals along with other technologies. If you want me to take a look at anything in particular, put it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. So the standard format of these are, we'll take a look at the unboxing. I'll go through some of the details for the specification. I'll do the pros and cons. And then I'll do some game footage showing the mouse and the mouse movement. Taking a look first at the unboxing, the boxing from Corsair has this nice little flap at the front. So I use a warranty guide. The mouse itself is well packaged. Get the standard manuals here from Corsair, how to set it up. Once you get inside the box, you always get this little package a bit like Mad Cats where you get the additional thumb grips, which you can add on, which is this kind of modular feeling that Corsair are going for here. Got a magnetic plate as well, and the standard rubber feet on the bottom. There's two of these, there's one with an extended thumb rest and one without, with just a rubber texture. The standard one on it is just a smooth plastic. Additional to this you also get a little carry bag for the additional parts for these modular pieces. As you can see here on the bottom of the mouse, it has these exceptionally large feet once you take this plastic cover off. The mouse itself has this aluminium front, there is a black version. It has uh, this smooth plate that you can interchange on the thumb part which you switch to the modules. And you've got the two side buttons here. The rear of the mouse, you've got this contoured shape. I'm not particularly a fan, it feels a little bit long in my hand, but it's a nice shape in general. Didn't give me any problems playing it at a long period mat again for your finger to sit on which stops it sliding around. Finish on this mouse is a plastic rubber textured effect, it's very nice. You've got the front grills here with some RGB lighting at the front and the scroll wheel and the left and right mouse button. The scroll itself is nice, decent size and it's got a decent rubber top. You've got this honeycomb base on it as well on the floor plate, which is a bit unusual, I've not seen that before, I don't know why it's this honeycomb. It's a nice little effect, so you don't ever see the bottom of the mouse. But it does have larger feet than normal. And you can definitely tell that when you're playing with it. We'll go into a bit more detail in a bit. This is full aluminium, this front. The cable's braided. It feels short. It's definitely shorter than the standard mice, including the M65 or anything from Razer. It feels about 1.5 meters. The buttons have quite a nice feel. Side ones on the front, left and right. Changing the plates over here, you get this one with the rubber thumb piece, which I'm using at the moment when I've been gaming. See here the magnetic sides, which are a nice fit, nice and easy to change. And here's the one with the thumb rest. If you prefer your thumb to glide around, I don't have this issue because my thumb sits a little bit higher on the mouse when I'm gaming. Some people might find they're dragging the thumb across and this will prevent that. It does give it a little bit of extra stability, although it's quite a wide mouse, as you can see here. So that's what's included in the box. So getting into the technical specification here, as I said, this is the aluminium version. You can get a black version as well, which places the aluminium plate. It's a 1600 DPI optical gaming sensor, generally built for the FPS market. Obviously you can use it from other styles, like maybe MMO, but you'll have a limited amount of buttons. It's got large smooth feet, which is unusual. It's got six programmable buttons. It's got a standard four pull rate of 125, 250, 500, and 1000. It comes in at 126 millimeters long, by 95.5 millimeters wide by 45 millimeters high and it weighs without the cable 122 grams. So starting with the cons here, start with the bad, finish on the high. 
And one of the cons on this was the shorter USB cable. I'm not sure why they've included this. It's certainly shorter than the M65. I found with the accessible I've got here, the cable was a bit of an issue for me. I'd have to use some form of extender. It's a bit of a disappointment. The large side buttons, I'm not particularly a fan of. I think they look a bit cheap. I also don't like the way you have to press them upwards. On your thumb, you can't press them down. And when you push them in from the side, it just feel like you're pushing up and sideways. The single profile DPI button also is a bit of an issue for me. You have to cycle through five DPIs if that's what you've got customized in the Corsair software. I don't understand why they've not had two on the top here. It's a bit of an issue for me that you're not able to change the weight in these mice. But for this price range, this is quite common. I know the M65, again, you could change the weight, which is about the same price, comparing this Corsair Glaive to that. My other issue is the Corsair software, but this is common across all the Corsair. Mice is not particular to this Glaive. Again, I just think the customization on it is never the easiest, and they could definitely do some rework. So the pros here, this is a nice quality build mouse here from Corsair. Just feel a little bit cheaper than the M65, but it's still a nice build. It's nice and smooth. It's got a decent soft rubber finish. I do like the rubber sides for your pinky and for your thumb to be able to grip it. This certainly helps you from, uh, stop the mouse from slipping in your hand. And I like the ability to be able to change some of the magnetic interchangeable parts. The weight feels good, like I said, but I do feel it's a little bit light on the mat. It might be because it glides so well, so that could be a positive. But for me, it feels a little bit too fast for me and I can't change the weight. So for me, it won't be one that I take forward. I'll be going back to the M65 that I'm currently using. The ability to change the different sides are good. It's got a nice three RGB lighting and I love the front grille RGB lighting. This is the first gaming mouse I've seen with it. The Razer haven't done that yet. I don't think Logitech have, so good here to see Corsair taking that step forward. It's got a nice scroll wheel. The scroll on this has got a nice rubber top. It's got a nice feedback when you're scrolling around. It's not too fast and it's not too clunky, which is good and the actuation is good when you press it down. The overall buttons on this, like I said before, got good tactile feedback. They're quite light to press, the left and right mouse buttons, and the side ones a little bit more tricky. Didn't really have an issue, I just didn't like the fact that I always felt like I was pushing up on it. It's kind of, kind of your natural thumb movement, but I like to push more inwards than up and inwards. I have no tracking issues. The tracking on this mouse was really good, as you can see here in some of these battlefield footage. The tracking is helped also by being able to increment the DPI here by one increment per time, which is the first mouse I've seen to be able to do this. That's a good addition. Helps for tracking and setting that little bit of niche to where you want it to be, because it's not being 50, which they normally are every 50 increment. This can be done by one. So overall, this mouse is good. Probably still prefer the M65, but it's not a bad mouse here from Corsair. Certainly worth a look at if you're after a new gaming mouse in the market and you want something that's slightly more up to date. And obviously the front RGB lighting is cool. So I'm going to leave you here with some Battlefield feedback showing me how I'm playing with the mouse. Hope you've liked this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all again later. Bye bye.